began with a simple vision and a little factory in a little town, one that soon grew into a global revolution whose impact is still felt increasingly today by the millions whose lives have been touched by it. The man was Jorgen Skafte Rasmussen, a visionary Danish engineer. The town, Schopau, Germany, and the year was 1907. The year that saw the setting up of the now legendary Maschinenfabrik Schopau, or the Schopau Machine Factory, which was soon to become the cradle of visionary innovation and engineering brilliance. Little did Rasmussen know then that he would be the one to trigger off an engineering revolution that would rock the world. It all began when Rasmussen and his dedicated team set to work in building a steam-powered vehicle, the first of its kind then in the world in 1914. Called the Dampfkraftwagen, his innovation rocked the world and literally set the wheels of vehicular engineering perpetually in motion. Taking this one step forward, the company then went straight to work on designing a two-stroke engine. Developed and later marketed under the brand name DKW, it underwent several test stages and finally made its entry into the commercial market. Initially positioned as a toy motor catering to a younger market, the revolutionary DKW was sold as Des Naben Wunsch, or in English, the boy's desire, with much acclaim. Seeing its success and realizing its enormous potential, Rasmussen immediately commissioned the DKW for production as a motorcycle engine in 1919. This was the turning point in the history of motorcycle manufacturing in the world. 1922, the year Germany and the rest of the world saw the first DKW two-stroke engine motorcycle make a triumphal entry into the world arena. Within three years, the coveted DKW motorcycles were rolling off the world's first motorcycle assembly line production facility. By the end of the decade, DKW had attained its undisputed dominance and superiority as the world's largest manufacturer of motorcycles with an annual production of 60,000 units with 15,000 employees in 16 companies. It was not long before DKW, later known as MZ, made its debut and reinforced its might and superiority in racing circuits. Between the years of 1922 and 1936, these German wonder machines brought home no less than 45 championships and Grand Prix trophies. The following years saw outstanding riders like Horst Fuchner, Ernst Degner, Luigi Traveri, and Jerry Hocking and Mike Halewood, Alan Shepard and Dieter Braun taking the bike across the finishing line and achieving greater glory. In 1932, a union was fostered that would take DKW to even greater heights. Its global dominance was perpetuated when it merged with Audi Wanderer and Horch to form Germany's largest automotive group, Auto Union. Then its destiny took another path when the Second World War broke out. Commercial motorcycle production was temporarily curtailed. DKW motorcycles played a crucial wartime role, providing the German army with tough, efficient and reliable transportation. In 1950, when the war was finally over, the Schopau plant resumed its production of commercial motorcycles. The immediate aftermath of the war saw a historic name change for DKW. Auto Union adopted the name Motorradwerk Schopau in 1956, and the new legend, MZ, was proudly emblazoned on all 125 new motorcycles. The RT-125, first developed in 1939 with much success, was reintroduced to the market after the war. Vastly improved, it became an instant international success, 
and it served as the model for major competitors. It became the model for the first Yamaha bike, the British BSA Bantam, and the Harley Davidson Hunter. In 1970, MZ achieved its production of the historic one millionth MZ motorcycle. In 1983, the two millionth MZ motorcycle was assembled with exports to more than 100 countries. In 1991, the fall of the Berlin Wall saw the reunification of Germany. MZ was subsequently privatized and renamed Motorrad und Zweiradwerk GmbH, or MUZ in short. Following its privatization in 1992, MUZ added to its stable, future-oriented, classy and trendy niche products like street singles, touring bikes, enduros, and the easy folding scooter, fondly dubbed Charlie. In 1993, at the Salon de la Moto, the international award-winning Scorpion range of motorcycles was introduced. The new production facility in Horndorf, with its vastly improved production technology and new production methods, resulted in the MUZ Scorpion obtaining DOT slash EPA slash CARB approval for California in June 1995, the most difficult emission approval in the world. September 1996, a date that marked the advent of a new chapter in the history of this renowned German brand. Hong Leong Industries Berhard, a public listed company in Malaysia with 20 years experience in the motorcycle industry, stepped in as the new owners. The marriage of East and West saw the implementation of new product development plans to increase the competitive edge of MUZ motorbikes in key markets for the future. In November 1999, in line with the company's new vision, the brand name MZ was reinstated, a strategic move implemented to draw on the strength of its sterling brand heritage. 1998 saw MZ re-emerging in the World GP500 Championships, achieving two pole positions in 1999. Between 1995 to 1999, MZ also successfully participated in the European Sound of Singles Championships with the Scorpion 660. In January 2000, the RT125 was reintroduced, this time with a new in-house designed 125cc four-stroke liquid-cooled engine with an output of 15 PS significantly the most modern in its class worldwide. At the high end, work on a 1,000cc parallel twin engine and sports, super sports and rice enduro motorcycles also commenced in 1998 and with its first 1,000S model scheduled for introduction in end year 2002. Today, MZ Motorcycles continue their saga of engineering performance and superiority, carrying on the tradition in a new breed of motorcycles, specially designed and engineered for the new millennium. Ride one today.